Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do a recipe um, that has an outsized mythology, um, and a lot of it is incorrect. So I'm going to tell you the name of the pie, and I'm going to want you to type in down below the first thing that pops into your mind. We're making vinegar pie. And I'm sure that for a lot of you, um, and you know, until I fell down the rabbit hole of research, me too, me too. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is the great depression. Oh, this was invented in the great depression. And that, that sort of idea is, is held up in a lot of ways because in the internet age, so many of us turn to the internet for information and a lot of blogs talk about how vinegar pie was invented in the Great Depression. Even a lot of mainstream, reputable magazines like Southern Living uh, would lead you to believe that vinegar pie is an invention of the Great Depression. That's just not true. It's just not true. So today we're going to make a, um, a vinegar pie that I found in a newspaper published in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in, I'm looking at my notes. I need to look at my notes on this one, 1859. Definitely not the Great Depression. And if it's showing up in a newspaper in 1859, it's showing up in people's houses probably 10 years before that, 15 years before that maybe. I can't seem to find it in any of my old cookbooks earlier. So in this pot, um, and I'm gonna make the recipe, I've shown it up on the screen. I'm going to make the recipe, but I'm cutting it in half because the recipe is for two pies. I only need one pie. So in this pot is water, and I'm bringing that up to temperature. I'm going to add in the vinegar. Now the recipe says cider or vinegar. Um, I'm using apple cider vinegar because uh, it just seems like the thing to do. Next it calls for molasses or enough sugar to make it sweet. So no one really knows what a teacup is. And I know that people are going to argue with me that, you know, teacups are standard size. At this point, I have personally measured about 70 teacups. <laughs> and they're, depending on the manufacturer, depending on when they were made, they're all different sizes. They really are. There's no standard. I mean, they're kind of all about nearly almost the same size, but they aren't. So we're going to get the molasses in there. And I guess... After you've made this a couple of times, you would know how much sugar that you would want to put in. I don't really know. Um, this is an American recipe, so I'm going to put in three American ounces and see how that uh, how that works for me. Yes, I know I could spray the inside of this mixing glass with cooking spray, and it would just slide right out. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. And the last ingredient... Um, is a few spoonfuls of flour. So I'm going to whisk those in. And then I'm supposed to bring it up to a boil. And this is it. This is the sum total of all of the ingredients for this pie. And as I track this pie through time, through cookbooks and through um, uh, newspaper articles, newspaper recipes, newspaper recipes are a great way to sort of track stuff because you start to see patterns of where the recipes show up. And then you start to see patterns of the recipes show up in the newspaper and then they make a jump to community cookbooks or church cookbooks or even regular published cookbooks. And, and the, the newspapers sort of lead you down that path. So if we pick this up in 1864, um, to this basic recipe that we just made, you see a little bit of butter put in. Um, butter the size of an egg. So, and I can see how the butter could improve the texture a little bit. Um, just that addition of a little bit of fat. So I've got three spoonfuls of flour in there now. And I think that is going to thicken up nicely. So I'll just keep whisking it. You get to 1872. In 1872, you start to see recipes that include one egg or maybe two eggs at the most, but one egg is, seems to be the pattern, and some crushed crackers. So the crackers would give a little bit of body 
to to the pie. Um, but and you're still seeing butter in at that point. So the butter stays, and then you add the egg and the cracker. What's the next one? Oh, 1876. 1876 is when you start to see this recipe um, with a little bit of lemon put in, and the lemon would sort of reinforce the acidic flavor of the pie and maybe push the flavor a little bit more towards lemon. And a lot of people posit that this pie was initially made up because people wanted a lemon pie, couldn't get lemons. What's the next best thing? What is also acidic? Well, vinegar. Um, and so the vinegar was, became a substitute for lemon in a lemon pie. Fully possible. Well within the realm of possibility. Okay, so this is thickening nicely. You get to 1929 during the Great Depression, during a time when everybody thinks that, you know, the world had collapsed and that, you know, there was nothing for anybody. The pie gets even more extravagant. You start to see even more eggs in the pie. Um, you see the eggs uh, separated so that you can put a meringue on top and not just put the whole egg into the pie filling. And a funny thing about the Great Depression and this pie, um, if you track on a graph, the number of mentions of vinegar pie in the media, in newspapers and cookbooks, you get to the Great Depression and it crashes. People aren't talking about it anymore. They're talking about it, but not in the same uh, amount that they had been talking to it up to that point. It doesn't completely disappear, but it's not the staple of the Great Depression that we seem to, in this time period, ascribe to it. Okay, the filling is boiling. I've got the bottom crust already rolled out and in the pie tin, and this requires a top crust. So I've got the off cuts from a bunch of pies that I've made this week, and we'll use that for the top crust. So this, this dough has been worked a couple of times because um, it's the off cuts. So it's a little bit more difficult to roll out, but I've got it rolled out and the recipe says that I can um, put a whole top or a lattice top. I really like lattice tops. So I'm just going to use a pizza wheel and I will cut some strips. I think the filling is good to go. Um, so I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't burn. Just keep cutting. Got the bottom crust. This is an all butter pie crust. Um, nothing special. Recipes elsewhere on our channel. Um, but I think it'll go really well with this pie. Don't need the whisk anymore and we'll pour this in. Could have used a little bit more filling, but um, definitely the whole recipe would have been too much. So we'll just lay on our strips for the top. And this one might be tricky given how liquidy our inside is. Eh, it might not be that bad. Okay, so it's a little bit messy. Um, but it'll be okay. I'm just going to wet around the edges where the lattice touches the side of the pie. Um, that just helps hold it in place. And then I will crimp it with a fork. And once I've crimped this with the fork, I will go around and just cut off these extra little pieces. Now, Oven preheated to 425. I have a pizza stone in the oven and a baking sheet because I think this is probably going to bubble over. So it's going to go into the oven um, probably half an hour. We'll keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the crust. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. You're studying that pie very intently. What is it? Is that the crust? So that's the, the crust has sunk into the filling. So it's a, a fairly thin filling. 
yes, uh, the filling was bubbly boiling hot when it went into the pie shell and then putting the lattice over top so that the lattice has sunk in. I give you okay. 1759, 1859. I give you, I give you 1859 vinegar pie from a newspaper in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. How much vinegar is in it? Uh, not much, uh, but a quarter cup. Okay, so I was thinking like two cups of vinegar. It's okay. Like, it looks very caramely. It's weird. Oh, it's so weird. Okay, so I did a very graceless job of cutting it as always because it's sti it's got that combination of being sticky. Sticky. Yep. From the sugar, it's a mess. So, I think the weirdness to me. Comes from the combination of the vinegar and the molasses. Is that what the? Yeah. So it's interesting because it's almost tart. Yes. Like, an, like, was it just white vinegar? No, I used apple cider okay. vinegar. So it has okay. an apple flavor to yeah. it, doesn't it? Yeah. So you get the apple flavor. Okay, it's combining weirdly with the molasses. The use of vinegar and molasses really does make it a hard times pie. Because molasses is the byproduct of sugar making. It is the least expensive sugar to buy if you had to buy sugar. Um, if you had to use white sugar in this, it would have been on a whole other level of expensive. Which, coincidentally, by the time you get to the Great Depression, all of those recipes are calling for refined white sugar. Um, but this is, you know, simple vinegar, water. I'm fascinated by this, though. Molasses and a bit of flour. And that's it. Because it's very apple -y. Yeah. I mean, it needs, I think it needed a little more thickener, maybe. Something like, something to thicken it a bit? That was, well, it said a few tables, a few spoonfuls of flour, but it didn't give a measurement, so I just was putting flour in until it went. I think, I really do think that, which one, I have to look at my list. Sorry. I have to look at my list. If you get to the 1872 recipe, you put in eggs and crackers. So mm -hmm. the eggs are the thickener. And if you used white sugar and, and apple cider vinegar, it would be a mock apple pie. I was gonna say, have you added some cinnamon yeah. to it? Or just something to give it texture? Yep. You could, I was just thinking, trying to think my way through how it would become a mock apple pie because yeah. it's gone. It's right on the edge of, of being just a, a, Just apple isn't it? An apple pie, like yeah. a, I've just, I've, I've been sitting here quietly just eating it and thinking about the texture and the... Yep. So, so, so crackers, white sugar, an egg, maybe just a touch more of the cider vinegar, and it would be a mock apple pie. I think even with the molasses and not white sugar, I with, could... with, with some crackers and, and yeah. some cinnamon, you'd, you'd pull it off. I think, the, I think the molasses flavor is pulling me out, though. Really? I, yeah. I... And I like molasses in so many things. I kind of like... I like the flavor. Okay. See, it's interesting because it's to me it's the the vinegar that I think is the part that is, it's the part that'll that people go. Mm. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, it it's not a bad pie. Okay, so I've certainly had worse. Yes. So have I. So vinegar pie, not from the Great Depression. It goes way back, and by the time you get to the Great Depression, it is an extravagant pie, in comparison to this one. To the from the 1850s. <laughs> the very simple version of this one. Yes. Um, and definitely something that was used in the in the northern Midwest. Um, that's where it came from. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.